entering our fourth phase of, uh, of the program, you know, under Coach Locks and, and under his direction, uh, especially offensively, we've kind of built to this moment. We kind of started uh, in, the, in the beginning with, with turf time and the way that we, we conditioned our guys. Ryan Davis done a good job throughout the program of keeping the coaches' offense, defense, special teams kind of resting where we are. So we're really, really happy with where we are. And we went into spring ball, and the spring ball, of course, was the second phase. And then the summer program is the third phase, and now we get the chance to go into camp, which is uh, probably the most important phase because it's the phase that we're in. Uh, offensively, we're looking forward to getting started. We got some new pieces that we've added to the puzzle. I feel like we really got a great, uh, a great chance and, and, and understanding of what we're doing offensively at this time. I thought that our guys attack the summer mentally as well as you can. A lot of you guys know we don't get a chance really physically to do a whole lot with them during the summer. Most of the things that we can do is the mental preparation uh, of our scheme, also the mental preparation for the fundamentals that we want at each of the positions. I think our guys have came out and attacked it well. Um, we still have a lot to find out, but we found out a lot. This offense will be really a personnel-driven offense, and, and we, we've been really, really happy and excited to see the eight behaviors that are conducive to us being successful. Now, that being said, there's a lot of competition in the room, which is great. We need that competition throughout our offensive room. And we're not at a time right now when we can come out and say we know exactly who's going to play and where they're going to play. Uh, we're going to try to make sure that we put our personnel in the best position uh, formationally and as personnel to give us the best and the most chance to be successful. In coming to the Jack Litch uh, Law Group office, I felt very at ease. Um, I was treated very kindly and I felt that this is the person that I wanted to work with. As you just saw, our clients have trusted us. We need to reward that trust, and we have, with great results and great service. Call the big dogs, the Jack Litch Law Group. Turp Talk is brought to you by Viner Four Gates Consulting. Call Viner Four Gates for all of your IT needs. In the D.C. Baltimore area, you could reach us at 301-251-2900 or on the web at www.vinerforgates.com. For, for Josh, obviously, I know there's competition out of the position, but for a quarterback who's coming in and didn't practice in the spring, what does it take in these few weeks to really understand the system? What do you need to see from him from today to August 31st? Well, the first thing it takes is a certain level of maturity. Anytime you come into a room, uh, basically with the 100 new people who are slightly ahead of you, you have to really put in the work that you need. He's done that. Uh, but his IQ coming in, his football IQ, uh, was really, really high. He has a great football pedigree. I know you know the history of his family as it pertains to the sport. Uh, but the one thing you have to come in with outside of that maturity, you have to come in with a great level of humility. He's done that. So he had to start at the bottom and kind of start working through everything from our personnel to understanding what we want schematically. Uh, the thing that he's probably did that's been the most impressive thing is to understand our personnel away from the building. Uh, he's built a great relationship with a lot of people that are in the building, in the quarterback room, in the offensive meeting room, and on the defensive side of the ball. So uh, those are the things that's going to take him to continue to be successful. But uh, the one thing that helps him is definitely his football IQ, uh, his pedigree. Uh, he's came in and went right to work. Uh, he hadn't been the guy that coming in. We had two or three days off here and there, but we couldn't get him out of the building. So we're extremely excited about um, the, the learning part. Of Coach Davis jumped in with him as soon as he got here physical part of it. He's, he's been working his butt off. This will be the first time a real opportunity we've seen him on the field with the football and, and you know, kind of meshing with those guys that we have in our personnel groups. Scotty, uh, Mike, right back in the spring, referred to Javon Leak as sort of one B behind, you know, with, along with McFarland. You know, one, one A, one B kind of thing. Um, how how um, does his skill set uh, Javon's fit into what you want to do, and, and can we see him maybe even be more as much a receiver coming out of backfield as he is a run, you know, running back? Yeah, I think position flexibility uh, with Leak is, is probably the most exciting thing that we have as far as him being one of our weapons. 
uh, not just out in the backfield, but being able to be aligned in different positions and then understanding the offense from a run game, pass game uh, standpoint. We're really also really excited to have him uh, as, as a returner for us in special teams because, as all, you guys all know, closer and closer we get the ball to the end line or to the goal line, it gives us a much better chance to score. So his position flexibility uh, for us has been great. Uh, of course, the personnel groupings that we can use him in has been great. Uh, but he is, you know, we, we don't really see them like a lot of other people see. Maybe there's a one, there's a two. Because of his position flexibility and also because of his skill set, he's extremely fast, doesn't mind running in between the tackles, can get the ball to the perimeter, block on the edge, can do all those things. We're really excited to have him in all And just to follow up, I think you said in the spring that you recruited him at, at East Carolina. I, I did. Uh, as, as a DB. Though. Well, we recruited him as a DB. We were really trying to find a different way to get him in the building. Uh, so I'll let that out of the, 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 the bag. But we really did. We thought he had a great skill set for defensive back. We also thought that he had a great skill set for running back. He just was a really, really unique talent, speed, size. The first time I saw him, not quite as filled out as he is now, but he was such a big guy uh, that could go play the corner position, <coughs> go play the safety position, but also could help you on offense. So, yeah, there's no question. I've known him for a long time. I was uh, He was probably one of the second or third kids that I saw when I came uh, to the University of Maryland, and he was smiling from ear to ear. And uh, we just remembered some of the, the conversations. A lot of the, his teammates didn't believe that he uh, would, 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 could possibly be recruited on both sides of the ball. So he, he had to come to me for validation of that. Comes to you. Uh, Coach, could you just talk about McFarland? What, what makes him so special as a running back? Wow. Um, you know, probably one of the more unique combinations of speed and quickness um, that I've seen in a long time uh, with the football in his hands. Uh, the other thing, that he's, you know, he's, he's really efficient in, in his cuts. You know, a lot of people think quickness is all about making people miss. Uh, he can he places his outside foot and cuts right under his shoulders and has great pad level. So when he makes a vertical cut, he gains more ground than a normal back. Even though that normal back may be able to go get you three or four extra 30 yards there, um, with, with Ant, when he puts his foot in the ground, that three or four yard burst that will turn into a tackle can turn into a split for a touchdown because of how efficient he is with his feet and his cuts. But the uniqueness of being able to make someone miss and then go from zero to 60 so quick gives him the ability to be a really, really special player. The other thing I think that makes him a little bit unique or a little bit different than a lot of the guys that have played at a high level even is that he is extremely quick to the tuck out of the backfield. When he catches the ball on the perimeter, he probably takes his least amount of time to get the ball caught high into the tuck and then vertical. When you can get a guy to do that understanding he gets a chance to eye up linebackers at six yards away versus three to four yards away, which gives him a much better chance to make the miss and be more elusive. So when you get players like that, whether they be at running back, tight end, or receivers that are extremely quick to the tuck, it, they increase your ability to have big plays. And because of those small details, those small details turn into sometimes huge plays in the game where it looks like a very simple play, but his quickness to the tuck will let him eye up defenders and make a miss and go get huge yards. So that's probably some of the, I hope that's one, something that you wanted to hear, but those are some of the fundamental differences of him as they compare to other players uh, throughout the time. Scotty, uh, the tight end situation, you obviously had Tyler Mabry to the mix. You had Chig, who, who had some moments last year, Noel Barnes. How do you kind of size those guys up, and, and Chig in particular, uh, given what we saw from him back in the spring? Well, Tyler, I'm going to have to wait that's kind of to be continued um, because we'll get to see him really for the first time. I thought Chig really grew in the run game. Um, you know, we, we tried to concentrate uh, with Chig to make sure that he could continue to be in the run game. You know, I love the tight end position. If we can play 11 personnel, 12 personnel, as many guys as we can get on the uh, field to be, you know, personnel driven to run the football and be aggressive and holding off the backside edge and base blocking front side. So I think the Chig has made some huge strides there. Noah as well. I think Noah, both passing game and in the run game, has really grown. Uh, he's gotten much stronger. If we looked at their numbers, both of them from the beginning when we got here in January to where Coach Davis has gotten them to right now, we should see more production in, in, in the run game. Both of them are very, very efficient in the pass game. Um, the places that we have seen Tyler in the weight room, 
Uh, he's, he's, he's a beautiful specimen. I mean, you know, he's, he's a great young man, very smart and detailed in the playbook. He knows it really well. We don't know how well he knows it on the field, but in the classroom, uh, he's been very responsive to the way Coach Mike Miller is coaching. Mike has done a good job. All the guys working around him. And our GAs, they don't get enough credit because during the summertime, a lot of times those are the guys that are here, Nick Cochran and some of our other guys have done a really good job of progressing him and getting him to the point of where we hopefully will see him ready to go when we take the field. Good room. Uh, really, it's a really diverse room. Uh, we feel like we can go block the C area. We feel like we can get to the seams. We also feel like we can make some tough catches in some tough locations. So the connection of the tight end position in college sports and pro sports really gives you that flexibility to be able to run it and throw it from the same personnel group. Excuse me. Uh, Loxie said that they were you know, showing back to the more natural position of wide receiver. How excited are you to see him you know, in the offensive system for the fall camp? Well, you know, anytime you get uh, a guy uh, with a history at the position that's played the position, that has a want to to play the position and add more depth to our receiver room and give them the ability to push the top of the room up to a higher level. You want that competition. We're really excited to see, you know, where he comes in at. And one of the hardest parts about playing in the interior slot position is that it is a position that you have to play mentally on the run and on the move. Uh, whereas a lot of other uh, positions on the field at the receiver, you get pre-snap keys and you're working off of your pre-snap keys. In the slot, just like the quarterback, those movement keys are truly movement keys. So he's reading on the run. So we're excited to see how he's able to play, but I'm more excited to see how, you know, we can grow his football IQ. We can have be on the same page uh, with a quarterback that, you know, he should know. Uh, and, and, and just to move that relationship forward and then getting with the guys that we have here uh, because he and he, both he and Josh will be kind of coming in together in the back end of the offense to begin with and trying to learn everything that we have and grow together. And then, you know, the relationship that he already has been able to, to grow with, with Big and with Max and Tyler has been great because he's been getting a lot, probably a lot more reps with those guys because they had a better understanding during the summer and because of when we had uh, a chance to get Savoy here in the summer, he's had a little bit more time now to build a relationship with those guys. So we're looking forward to where he grows in, in, in the position. Second or center. Scotty, with the depth in the quarterback room, how do you balance the competition among them with trying to get the guy who's going to be the starter on the opening day enough enough reps to feel comfortable, especially if it's going to be a guy like Josh Jackson? If you have the answer to that, you know, I'm waiting on it. Um, I was just working on that for the last week and a half, trying to figure it out. What we've tried to do, truly, we, we, we did it in the spring. We, we always do it when we're in a competition. We're going to try to equally distribute the reps until um, the person that really shows that they are going to rise a little bit more before we change those reps. We're going to try to. That doesn't mean it always happens. And you don't get the chance to do it in a lot of situations amongst the one practice segment. So some of those equally balancing the reps will have to happen over a two, three day deal. But at the same time, we get a lot of time in camp, which is what is great. Um, in camp, uh, there's a lot of growth that happens in the classroom, and as you see the growth that happens in the classroom, you really want to give the reps to the guy that who, who can win in the classroom, uh, do what he's supposed to do away from the building, and, and then transition into the field. So I think that'll work itself out, but, but right now that is a very, very hard thing to do when you have guys, and a lot of guys that are efficient with the football, uh, that have played, that know the game. Uh, so we got our work cut out for us, and that is one of the toughest things that we have to do. Hey, Coach. Um, sorry, back here. <laughs> okay. So, obviously, a lot of the coaching staff is new. You're new this year, new quarterback. What's what's the vibe like in in the locker room? Is it are people excited for you? Know, is there a a feeling of a fresh start? What what is what does it feel like with the players and the coaching staff? You no, know, every day we just I mean we're very grateful right, for a lot of different reasons. Coming from a lot of different backgrounds, our kids being recruited from different places. Uh, I think our slogan around the building, if you've seen it, maximize it, kind of, that, that talks to who we are right now. Every single day we walk in the building, we're coming in with a lunch pail and we're working our butts off. And we're really happy to do it. There's a lot of new relationships in the building, there's no question about it. But from the get-go, we've came in and we've been very transparent 
Uh, offensively, we have a chair that I put up here every now and then. We call it the chair of transparency, where kids ask me questions and I give them the true answer about where we are offensively and what we need to get done on the field offensively. But I think, you know, Coach Locks has said it best. We're going to try to maximize every moment that we have. I think the, the behavior that we're all looking for as coaches is just all the behaviors that are conducive to us being successful. We talk about everything that people, you know, think that are just slogans and all that. It's real. You know, we want our kids sitting in the front. You know, we want our kids when they get here to get 10 minutes before meeting starts. All those things, once we get everybody to that point, and we, we understand it, then we truly feel like we'll be maximizing every single second, every moment of the day, every play. And that's kind of the vibe right now. Everybody's just trying to get to a point of where we're maximizing our opportunities because we know what we have. This is the University of Maryland. We're playing in Big Ten football, and we got a really, really good football team full of athletes. Now, the, the, the challenge that we have is that as coaches is that now we're going to have to offensively put all those pieces together on the field keep the unity together because of different personnel groupings and plan and make sure that we give ourselves the best opportunity to play and we can maximize our opportunities that we have in the fall. Questions for Coach Montgomery? 